Let's talk about food, baby. Let's talk about you and me. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, welcome back to Spilling the Mad Tea. Uh, today, we're just going to get right into it, and we are going to be talking about food. Yum. Yay! <laughs> my favorite topic. I seem to talk about food a lot on this uh, podcast, so I'm just going to keep it going. Specifically today, we're going to talk about Epcot food. Um, we're going to continue our uh, park restaurant series with our reviews and our favorite restaurants and so we're going to go to Epcot, which honestly, I would say that is easily my favorite place to find food in all of Disney property. True. For sure. Mm-hmm. Epcot's the best place to eat. So much variety. I know it It gets the attention for being the place to drink, but the drinks pale in comparison to the food you can get at Epcot. I agree. We can do both. I, pr- I appreciate both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah both. you can do both. <laughs> But, um, so we're going to just jump right into it, and this, who wants to go first? Anyone care to share their favorite spot? So, my restaurant that I picked is Tepon Ito. Uh, it's located mm. in Japan Pavilion, in the big building, up, like, the fi- 5,000 stairs it takes to get to the top <laughs> of the building. Um, and it also shares the building with Tokyo Dining, which I've also eaten at. So I'll be kind of talking about both of them, because they... They're, they share the same kitchen and some menu items and stuff like that. How lovely, because I have not yet eaten at Tokyo Dining, so I would yeah. love to hear about it. We did that our last trip. It is a table service restaurant. Both of them are. And the price range says $15 to thirty four ninety nine, but there are definitely some things that are That's way more stretch. than thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> uh, so just be aware of that. And it does accept the dining plan. But some of the things have changed since the last time I ate at Teppanito on the dining plan. So I'll get to that in just a second. Um, Obviously, they have Asian food, Japanese food, sushi. um, And Teppanito is a teppanyaki-style restaurant where the food is cooked right in front of you and um, you sit around the the cooktop. Um, It is open for lunch and dinner. And I have been there multiple times for dinner, and I think once for lunch with Katie and Rachel when we did our um, Sanderson Sisters yeah. that sounds trip. Right. The menus are the same for lunch and dinner, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter which time you go. Are the prices different for lunch and dinner, no, or is it like the, the exact same? It's the exact same. Well, yeah. That's kind of nice. Oh, they want to make that money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So every time I've eaten there, I've had the dining plan, and I went for the filet mignon because I'm on the dining plan, and I can get whatever I want, so I'm going to go for the most expensive (laughs) thing. But this is where that change comes in, and it doesn't look like the filet mignon is available for dining plan participants anymore. Oh, wow. Um, That's lame. Really sad. It has been moved to a category called entree add-on enhancements. I saw that, too. Yeah. That's too many words. It's either an entree add-on or an entree enhancement. Yeah. It's... Not both. Is this new, I mean... Do you know... Does anybody know? It's... It's new new to me. Because I wasn't aware. I don't know. Uh, Like I said, I always got the filet mignon when I went, but you can't anymore unless you want... I think it's $34 out of pocket if you want to if you're on the dining plan and you get it i mean you could just get it if you're just paying for it that's not that bad for a filet <laughs> if mignon. you're rich like that yeah <laughs> after you, if you got the money to throw it a filet mignon, mignon you can mm-hmm. um but otherwise i i always get the ginger mousse cake and then jerry gets the green tea mousse t- mousse cake and we share because those are two of my favorite flavors of dessert i could eat ginger anything all day long and then green tea just makes me happy so we split those, and I love them, and they're really good. And then I looked at the menu and kind of said, like, if I went to Tepanito today, like right now, I would order the julienne steak entree, and that comes with a garden salad, udon noodles, vegetables, and steamed rice. And the only reason I chose that is because of the udon noodles, because that sounds good. Mm. You already know I love me some udon. I always thought that place was very interesting, because you get, it seems to me that you get rice, and you get noodles. And I'm like, that's a little weird, but... I ain't mad about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to mm-hmm. eat it. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> I ain't mad about both. <laughs> yeah, just give me both. And as far as uh, drinks go, Tepan Ito and Tokyo Dining share the same drink menu. Uh, so last March when we were in Disney World, Jerry and I ate at Tokyo Dining for the first time instead of Tepan Ito. 
and I was going to order a violet silk martini because I had went through the menus of all the restaurants we were planning on eating at way ahead of time and picked out everything that I wanted to eat. <laughs> but when we sat down at the table, they had like this special ginger martini um, advertised. And I was like, yeah, definitely getting that. And that was really, really good. I don't know if that's going to be like a more all the time kind of thing, special drink or whatever, or if it was just like for that time. But if you see ginger martini, go for it. And Jerry got a Tokyo Sunset, which is coconut rum, creme de banana. I want to say creme de banana. <laughs> 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 um, creme de banana, peach schnapps, and pineapple juice. And that was really good, too. So, I mean, you can never go wrong with a Disney drink. I think they're they're right. tailored to be. Mm-hmm. They, they um, make you pay a lot of money, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Which, if you're on the dining plane... I don't plane, ever think I've had a drink I didn't like at Disney. Yeah, if you're on the dining plane, you get an alcoholic drink now. That's that's a thing that you can do. That makes up for the... the filet mignon not being yeah. covered. The enhancement yeah. food. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't get. Like, if you're already ordering, like, a huge entree, like, when you're at Teponito and you order a huge entree, you're going to get a lot of food. Who wants to add on, like, a $34 steak? Like, I don't... And it's going to be this big... Yeah, I don't really get why you want to order more expensive food when you're already getting a ton of food, but right. that's yeah, just me. It's weird. That's, I don't know. Because they say add-on enhancement, like, you're obviously already getting an entree. Like, I don't right. know if you could just go and order that filet mignon. You, put, you wouldn't get anything else with it, like the vegetables and stuff like that, I'm assuming. Is that if you wanted to go there and get filet mignon, that would be all that you got, which kind of sucks. It's really so. strange. I don't... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, um, and then for like kid and picky eater friendly, there's steak and chicken for those like me who don't like seafood and sushi. And the kids menu is pretty much the same as the adult menu, just smaller portions. Uh, no chicken nuggets or pizza here. So if your kids enjoy, you know, that kind of flavor of whatever you're getting, white get. people food. Yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's no chicken nuggets and no pizza, so uh, that's for you to make the decision if your kids would eat anything there. Um, the atmosphere and aesthetic is very modern and minimalist and definitely Japanese. And I would say the theme is more suited to adults, but children would still enjoy like the teppanyaki and the chefs are very interactive, like super, super interactive with the guests around the table. It's um, like dinner and a show. To another point. You will be sat with strangers, basically, because the tables are huge. And so you don't just get one to yourself unless you're super lucky and go at an off time. But it's fine to be sat with other people. It's definitely a good place to go with when you have a big group. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I would definitely recommend Teppan Ito over Tokyo Dining for those with children. Because Tokyo Dining is like your traditional sit-down table service restaurant. Like, you have your own table and everything, so... Um, you asked what I eat there again in a heartbeat. I feel like every trip we're either going to go to Tokyo Dining or Teppanito. Like <laughs> it's, it's just a given. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also asked what's something else that I'd like to try. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I don't like seafood. So my options are a bit limited. They have like chicken, steak, shrimp. I'm not going to get the shrimp. Um, and then they have a veggie option called Yasai. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, that looks good. It's just seasonal vegetables, mushrooms, and tofu served with a garden salad and steamed rice. Um, Ooh, I bet their tofu is delicious. Yeah, I bet it's really good. And if I was going to go real big and I got the veggie option, <laughs> I could try the Wagyu steak add-on for $78. Oh, That's lovely. an add-on enhancement. Oh. Can I just tell you, so when I was in Japan, we went out for dinner. We had like a free night for dinner, and me and my roommate went – to get like co- like Kobe beef because it, it was the closest we were going to be to Kobe and we went to a teppanyaki style restaurant and it was just the two of us and the chef and we paid about like a hundred dollars for the meal not yeah. including our like glasses of wine and it was the most incredible like culinary experience I have ever had <laughs> it just like melted in your mouth it was mm. amazing so I'm yeah. sure it would be very similar at Teppanetto. Yeah. Just 
but Jerry it's definitely I, a treat like, yourself moment. <laughs> yeah, Jerry and I <laughs> don't mind spending money on really good food, like when it is a special occasion for that. Like, he would probably go if we had the dining plan and got like our main entree covered. He would probably go for the seventy-eight dollar wagyu steak to try it. Like, yeah, that sounds like Jerry. Yeah, we, yeah, he's definitely a, a food person, so he doesn't mind <laughs> spending some extra money on some food. Um, but that just sounds like it would be really good. And then a little bit of history. So I couldn't find a specific date on when Teppanito opened. Um, it used to be called Teppanyaki, and that just refers to the style of food being cooked there. Uh, Teppan means iron griddle, and yaki means grilled or pan fried. Fun facts. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the name changed in 2007 after about a month-long major refurbishment, so it went from Teppanyaki to Teppan Ido. Ido means bay entrance, and Ido was the name of the city of Tokyo before it was named Tokyo. <laughs> oh. yeah. uh, the Ido period lasted from 1603 to 1868. Wow, that's a long time. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, and like I said, I couldn't find the date for the opening of the restaurant, but the Japan Pavilion opened with Epcot in 1982. So that was the that was the only date I could find. <laughs> All right. And then I got a couple more fun facts. Um, you might want to call it hibachi, but it's not hibachi because hibachi means fire bowl and refers to a grill that use char- uses charcoal. So it's not hibachi. It's teppanyaki. <gasps> Oh. And uh, so all the hibachi places liars. around me are liars. Yeah. Unless they're cooking with charcoal. Which they're not. They're not. <laughs> then it's stepping I'm going to go tell them about themselves. Actually, I went to a hibachi place for my birthday this year. That's what we did. And it was like. Yeah. Like a real hibachi place? Yeah, it was all you could eat. And so you had like 90 minutes since the time you sat down to order like as much food as you could. Um, and then you had to like grill it yourself on these like grills that were inset in the table. And it was so That's cool. Really cool. Yeah, it was really, really fun. That also sounds like a challenge. Yeah. Like, oh, it was. We had like our timers like, going. Bitch, I could order a lot. You got like an iPad at the table and you would just be like, send us this, send us this, send us this, send <gasps> us this. Crap. What haven't we tried? What was good? What do we want more of? We're down to 45 minutes, guys. How we doing? How we doing? <laughs> it was so fun. Oh, my God. Teppanyaki style dinners got their start in 1945 with the restaurant chain Misono. Um, and they kind of did it as a way to cook Western influenced foods on a teppan grill. Wasn't super popular with Japanese people, but tourists and foreigners loved watching their food being cooked in front of them. So it kind of just blew up from there. And then Mitsukoshi, the department store on like the ground level of the building in the Japan Pavilion, also owns the two restaurants above it. Huh. Yeah. How That's lovely. cool. Have you guys seen much about this Takumi Te restaurant that opened up recently? No. No. Enlightened. So, it, Japan has a new restaurant um, that's got a $4 sign. It's meant to oh. be like. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like. Like a Monsupa. Uh huh. And it's like signature of signature. But they look like they have, like, a really, really lovely menu. And you can do, like, a tasting menu. And it's, like, a set course. It's, like, a set tasting menu for, like, $150. But it looks Per person? Amazing. Yeah. But, it, oh. I mean, it looks really cool. Jerry would probably be interested in that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I, when you were talking about, like, that, I was like, I think you should check this out. You guys want to take a little trip down over to Canada? Yeah, I'd love to because I've never been. Yes. I've never been to eat in Canada. Okay. Me either. Well, when Rachel proposed a Epcot restaurants episode, I was like, "Hmm, I feel like I generally don't sit down to eat in Epcot. I feel like I usually try to take advantage of like all of the like seasonal kiosks and carts going on because let's be honest, there's always a festival going on at Epcot." So when there is, mm-hmm. I try yeah. – I feel like I'm always just eating from the carts. However, um, I think – like when I went and asked my mom and my mom, and I was like, what would you say is like your favorite Epcot restaurant? And she was like, oh, Canada. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like we've eaten there oh, a couple Canada. of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we've always <laughs> just had a really lovely meal at La Cellier Steakhouse. 
So back in the, like the basement level towards the back of the Canada Pavilion, you can find Le Cellier. It is a signature dining table service restaurant. It's a three dollar sign on the app, which means it is thirty five to fifty nine ninety nine dollars per entree per adult. If you are on the dining plan, it takes two dining plan credits. They do serve like American and obviously Canadian style food, and it is mainly meat heavy. It is a steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> They're only open for lunch and dinner, and they have the exact same menu for both meals. Uh, I ate there most recently in 2017 when we went with, like, our whole big extended fam. So there were eight of us there at the table. So we had a pretty hefty check, that uh, <laughs> that meal. <laughs> but I think every time I've gone, I've gotten the Canadian cheddar cheese soup, which is made with Moosehead Pale Ale and Applewood Smoked Bacon, which I think think a few of you may have tried at some of the festivals. It's usually at the <laughs> whatever kiosk is being presented in Canada. Katie, you're a fan, correct? I'm a huge fan. I actually make this, well, not anymore because I don't really eat uh, bacon, but I used to make it for Cameron on like date nights at home. That was like our go-to date night meal. And he hadn't actually had Canada's version until we went for our the trip to where we got engaged. And we ate there the that next night. And he had it. And he was like, I like yours better. Aww. This is good, but I like yours better. And I was like, right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never made that before. Did you? Where did you find a recipe? Um... Or- online somewhere i can send you the one i'd love to have that it's pretty spot on it's a lot of it's very um red onion heavy and that's what gives it the like that extra Mm -hmm. spiciness almost Mm Hmm. interesting well after i get the cheddar cheese soup um i will usually go i know (laughs) 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 i don't want to trouble getting that out (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> I usually go f- <laughs> for a piece of steak. I mean, they call themselves a steakhouse, and I'm not a good decision maker. So if you tell me you have steak, I'll probably just order steak. Um, they have three cuts on the menu currently. They have a char-crusted USDA prime ribeye uh, with warm fingerling potato salad, bacon, wilted spinach, capers, and whole grain mustard sauce oh, with a Bordelais sad. butter. God bless that. That sounds mm-hmm. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Anything with, you put capers on anything, and I like. Katie's like, um, y'all need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second cut is a USDA prime New York strip with truffle, figurling potatoes, chimichurri, and crispy onions. Oh, I love chimichurri. You know, I love chimichurri. Oh man! Mm-hmm. If they would switch, Matt loves some fingerling potatoes. Well, if they would swap the types of the cuts of meat to the swap swap, I'd be like in heaven. Listen, it's Disney. I bet you could do it. Oh, I bet you could too. Mm-hmm. Be like, I want what comes with the prime steak, yeah. but I don't want the prime ribeye. I'm sure they would do that. And they would be like, done, girl. Mm-hmm. And also, the last cut, last but not least, is the Le Cellier Filet Mignon. And, of course, they tell me this is the Le Cellier steak, so basically that's what I order. Because, again, I'm bad at decision-making. You tell me it's a steakhouse. <laughs> they name the steak after the restaurant. That sounds like a signature dish. I I'm bet sold. that thing is a lot of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Do you, it's do you have a price for that one? Well, they're well, all it's not between cheap. 40 uh, – I'm sorry. They're all between 56 and $59. Okay. So the filet mignon is a triple-A Canadian tenderloin with mushroom risotto, asparagus, tomato relish, and a truffle butter sauce. Um, So we said, like, the prices, they're expensive, um, but I don't think it's any more expensive than, like, a steakhouse you would find in any big city. Like, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse is expensive. Yeah. Most, like, nice steakhouses are going to charge you that much for a nice cut of steak. Yeah. So, I mean, all things considered. I don't think you go to 
Le Cellier or pretty much any of the table service restaurants expecting a cheap meal. Definitely like, not. Right. You should just Fair. put that out of your head that you're going to yeah. be paying. <laughs> paying I have never been, as much as I love steak, I have never been to... Like a nice steakhouse. Yeah. I've always yeah. done like Outback, Longhorn. Uh-huh. Like never... Yeah, I don't do, like, bougie steak. I think we've also tried, as a side dish, you can get five cheese macaroni and cheese or lobster macaroni and cheese. And I'm pretty sure we had a hard time deciding between which ones we wanted, and I think we got both the last time we were there. <laughs> the waitress was like, uh, you don't have to decide. And we were with my niece and nephew, so we figured the mac and cheese would get eaten. Um, and then they have the perfect way to cap off your meal I love the maple creme brulee. It comes with maple whipped cream and a shortbread mm. maple leaf cookie. And it is just, it's not too much maple. It's like just the right amount of maple. And it's I already delish. am obsessed with creme brulees. But when you add maple. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's just divine. Yes. So good. They also sell a chocolate mousse. Spelt M O O S E. Make all the male moose go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's so it's like. But is it directing traffic? <laughs> it's well, it's chocolate moose in the shape <laughs> of a moose, and it's very cute. It's adorable. Uh, it's on the kids menu, but from experience, I can tell you they will let adults order it because <laughs> it's stinking cute. So if you're like Katie and you don't like steak and you don't eat steak, this might seem like it's a tough restaurant for you. But they do have other options. Um, They serve duck. They have a tilefish paella. And they have impossible meat dumplings. Huh. Look at that. Yeah. Wouldn't go to La Cellier to get impossible meat dumplings. But if I was with a family that was, you know, like my family was – demanding to eat there it'd be at least they have an option you would not starve you would be okay (laughs) right uh on the kids menu they have chicken steak salmon grilled cheese mac and cheese and pasta so it's not too if your kids aren't big steak fans or you don't want to buy them steak you don't have to but if they are into steak they can do that too so there's a little something for everyone um i would not recommend making any like crazy fast passes for right after this meal or eating here Mm -hmm. on like a very hot day because like you may have noticed it's very heavy food it's like Mm -hmm. a lot of heavy carby meaty food um, that keeps you warm in the cold winters in Canada so (laughs) I like to eat here (laughs) on like a fall wintry day when you get to go down into the cellar and in the restaurants, decorated with stone arches and flickering candles, and it resembles a wine cellar of the Grand Chateau-style hotels in Canada, and it's really warm and lovely. Um, they do have a really nice wine menu. Like It does look like you're eating in a wine cellar, so they have a really nice wine menu to complement all of the steaks you're eating or, you know, impossible dumplings. Um <laughs> And I would eat here again, but it is expensive. It's a lot of food, so we don't do it every. T- we don't do it every time. It used to be like one of the first restaurants where the reservations would run out. But I was just checking the app earlier today, and it doesn't seem like it's as hot of a ticket as it once was. Ah, the, you know, Disney keeps adding more and more good restaurants, so mm-hmm. this one's kind of like falling off of its grace, I think, a little bit. So it's easier to get into, but the food is still good. So that is my recommendation for Epcot. Oh, also, they have a dessert on the menu dedicated to Duke Kaboom, which is just a fun <laughs> 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 It's a brownie Aww. with vanilla cream, maple meringues, and raspberry. Uh, and we also had, we had really lovely service the last time we were there. We, like, the waitress was so, so nice and really knowledgeable um, and so we ended up like tweeting into Disney with a cast compliment for her. So that's 
Oh, so, so I think nice. why we liked it. We just had like a really, really lovely meal the last time we were there. It is a nice, it's a nice like treat. And it's also, it's really removed. And like I said, it's La Cellier, it's in the cellar. Um, and so there's no windows. And if you like, if you are over stimulated by like Disney theme parks and you like being able to step away, um, this is like this, you really feel removed because it's such an isolated restaurant. Mm-hmm. You can take a break from Busy World Showcase. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? It's so easy with Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what we're doing right now by reading this ad. We struggled to find the right way to distribute our podcast, and Anchor made it quick, easy, and free. We're on platforms we had never heard of, and that's all thanks to Anchor doing the hard work. So if you have been thinking about starting your own podcast, head on over to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start. I always, always, always eat at Coral Reef um, if I'm planning to eat some, if I'm planning to get like a reservation meal um it is my favorite i love seafood probably more than anything and so it's wonderful uh coral reef is in the seas building at in future world um over by the nemo ride it is a table service um it is included on the dining plan they did have a lot of that enhancement stuff on there too which I still don't understand what that is <laughs> but okay um it says on the app it's $15 to $34.99 mm, maybe true maybe yeah I feel like that's accurate um they say that it's like American and seafood which they do have uh, they, they have a good uh a good range of choices I feel like that for if you're with somebody like me that loves seafood and Kelly is there and she don't want no seafood, so. No fishy for me. <laughs> they have a really good vegan option there. I forget I what I it is. I think I had the vegan option when we went. But it's like a full. Because that's the only time I've ever yeah, been there. Yeah, it's like a f- fully vegan option, but it's good. It's not like cardboard with a little yeah, sauce right. on it. That's pretty good. Yeah. I see a grilled garden vegetable skewer. Oh, that's not what I got. That it? it was like some kind mm. of yeah. That was it. Was it. like some. It was a meatless chicken thing. It was like a fried it's chicken. Not there. Thing. Interesting. Yeah. That is that's not on the menu. That's that sounds yeah. good though. Whatever you said. They they serve lunch and dinner, so um, that seems to be the consensus for most of these places. But um, like I said, I go there every time, so I'll probably go any other time. I don't know. I would love to go when I go next time, but I don't know what kind of money I'm going to be choosing to spend at the time. So we'll see how that goes. (laughs) As for what I normally have at this restaurant, I usually go for the um, seared mahi-mahi. It is served with jasmine rice, coconut. (laughs) I'm not that hungry. No, we have that too. (laughs) What'd you say? I didn't hear it. Can I just get one mahi? Um, but it is served with jasmine rice, uh, coconut and cilantro lime sauce, and Caribbean shrimp salsa, which is just divine. I, oh, I'm so glad that they have not switched up their menu very much and taken this away because, golly, it is so good. I don't think that I've tried anything else uh, from that place, so I would be really upset if they took it away. The shrimp and grits is really good. I always get that because they can easily take the andouille sausage out in that one. And usually they're like, no, you can't take the sausage out. It's sauce. But they can, and it is so good. They're like a stone ground, like, white Vermont cheddar grit. And, oh, my it God. It sounds lovely. When I was looking at the menu last night, mm-hmm. I was like, that sounds really good. Yeah, that's my go-to for there. I mean, I like the mahi, too. Sometimes I get that, but... I, that's my go-to is their shrimp and grits because they're 
delicious. So this would be, for you, this would be a, a good spot for you still to go because you'll still do seafood. Yeah, I'll eat fish if it's from a place I trust. Disney or anywhere that's an hour from the yeah. coast. So when I go to Disney, I hit coral reef often. Definitely. Katie, we ate here when we were we young. We, we did. We young little humans. This is my first memory of a table service same, restaurant at Disney. Same, and it was, I, I can, I, I swear, like, it's it's really strange that when you get older, you can still remember, like, how you felt in a certain place, and this place, I remember, I was like, holy cow, mm-hmm. we're eating in a place that's an aquarium, and we're eating fish, <laughs> like, <laughs> I've always thought that was a little weird. And there was, like, a diver that came yeah. down during our meal and was, like, waving at us. And we were like, what? It blew oh, our yeah. minds. We were, I was five and you mm-hmm. were six. So we were pretty young. Like, I personally only have, like, pieces of yeah. memories from that trip. Like, I don't really remember the trip. But I'll remember, like, certain things. And Coral Reef stands out Out of anything else. It, it yeah. is ins- it, it's really crazy how you can remember things for so long ago. But it's just, like... It's really cool. That's this is one of the memories I definitely have. But it, it this always is puzzles where... me that you go Sorry. into this restaurant and you eat seafood while looking at seafood. At live <laughs> seafood. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, but kind of sadistic. It's really <laughs> weird. However, I mean, it is it. It's amazing because it's like it's unlike anywhere that I've ever seen. Like you. You look into this place, and there's there's turtles, and there's anything, and then like you said, diving. sharks. The, spotting yeah. the sharks is always the most fun. Every time you see one swim by, you hear every kid in the building be like, "Shark, shark, it's yeah. a shark!" It's super. It's so pretty in there, and I think that's like one reason why I would. I mean, I keep going anyways. It's because it's just beautiful. Like even the tables and the everything else. It's just it's so nice. Drinks on their menu. They have they have several options. They're very um, theme thematically named, and so um, the one that I normally have that sticks out to me is um, it's called the Abyss, and it I don't know what it has in it because I can't Sky Vodka, oh, Bacardi Superior Rum, Blue Curacao, and pineapple juice. Lovely, always that got my back. Good. But um, it's very good. It is. But when I did. I was looking at the app last night when I was doing a little bit of um, looking at the menu or whatever, and they have specialty coffees that I had no idea was a thing, and I was like, wow, here I am. Take all of my money. (laughs) Actually, I want to say I got a a coffee. I don't know if it was a specialty coffee. It was expensive. I I hope it was, was too, because... But I think I got a coffee there when we went with Eva and Olivia. You were there, Stephanie. I was there with Eva. We there. I wasn't there with Olivia. Oh, well, then maybe it was just the one. Okay. Because we were, like, rushing to get Eva. out of there, I remember. Yes. And I'm pretty sure I got a coffee because I chugged it because we were so tired. Maybe. I got a coffee and, like, chugged it. And I was like, this is good. <laughs> yeah, because we were trying to like run out of there to, to get to Illuminations. And we were like, oh, my God. Can we? You got to let us go. Let us go. <laughs> Like, it took, it took a long time to get the bill, and we were like, but, but, illuminations, come yeah. on. illuminations, it's turning. <laughs> but, anyway, my point was, the co- the specialty coffee was Yeah, delicious. I think we got Irish coffee, sir. I'm mm-hmm. very interested, so when whenever I go again, I I don't know if I'll be getting it because this next time, because it'll be June, it's going to be hot as balls, but, you know, mm. it sounds lovely, and... If you get it at the beginning of the meal... You know, the restaurants always have, like, some serious AC. Yeah. You can enjoy it and, and cool off again by the time you're ready yeah. to leave. But. Although, June, man. Oh. It's going to be rough, but I am, I'm ready. However. We can um, get an ice Viking just... coffee. We don't have to sit down and get a hot coffee. We okay, can get, we can get boozy <laughs> coffee. Okay. We can make it, yeah, tipsy ducks. We're good. We will get. We'll get us some some boozy coffee. <laughs> okay, I'm good with that. All right, but um, but yeah, I've just I've become such a coffee person, so any coffee is fine, and it's not Starbucks, so I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. And so let's see here. Okay, for kids, kids, great atmosphere, great place to go. I think, as we said earlier, 
that we remember it to this day, and it's been 20-something years. So, take your kids, man. <sighs> Shut up, I'm Rachel. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, definitely take your kids. It It's really nice. They had some nice kid options. They had, I mean, if your kids don't like seafood, they had some nice things. I, they had a hot dog on there, and I'm like, all right. Hmm. Stephanie, are you looking at the menu because I can't pull it up? What else do you see? Yeah, I got you. They have Thank grilled you. fish of the day, grilled chicken with sweet soy sauce, a hot dog, pasta, a reef steak, grilled shrimp. So yeah, they have and lots of sides. They have some Nemo stuff. and Squirt's noggin concoction. Come on, okay. <laughs> adorable. Teaching kids how to be alcohol. <laughs> but yeah, it's it just seems fun. The atmosphere is great for kids, and and there are some options if they don't if they don't like seafood. So I think it's a win. Um, either way, as far as going back, I've gone back many a time. So I would say duh, but. I would go every time, but it is a little a little hefty on the pocket. So I, I don't I don't know that I would uh, do it every time, but I'd like to. Something that I, I would have that is not the, the mahi mahi like I have every time is I would just go big and get the uh, lobster sea seafood broil. It it sounded lovely. I'm like a new like lobster person. I I never really ate it a whole lot, and I just really love it. It's just really great. But um, it's it's kind of like your your low country boil kind of thing. It it it's really yeah. nice. Um, it's it's lobster duh, with a crab claw, shrimp, and dewy sausage, corn, potatoes with a ouzo garlic butter and a spiced chapino broth. I don't know. If that I would be fun to do and like split. Go and like get like a, a big I would split seafood that broil because, and share that. Yeah, I would definitely split that because. It was like forty dollars, I think, is what I read, and it's a lot, and I'm sure it's a lot of food for for that amount of money. So that's definitely something that would be good to share. Um, there's not a is there's not a whole lot of history on it. I didn't find a whole lot, but it did open. Um, it opened January the fifteenth of 1986, so it has been around for a while, um, and. It seems to be still pretty popular. There's always lots of people there every time I go. So, mm-hmm. it um, it's interesting. A um, couple of fun facts that I did find um, is that one of the desserts, the Bailey's Almond and Jack Daniel Mousse, which is a chocolate ganache and candied almonds recipe, is actually in a cookbook called America's Most Wanted Recipes, Just Dessert. So that was interesting, and I was like, mm, I might have to try that since it's in a most wanted cookbook. It's the most wanted dessert in America. Is it? <laughs> oh. Um, and then also, I do remember a lot of this place too because it was in, uh, I don't know if you guys are full house watchers, I would hope so. But if not, it, it had a very big part in a full house episode um, where they were. They did their little radio show under the water in one of those little pods or whatever. It was, I will always remember that. And then story time of, of when I worked there. Weirdest thing happened is that we, <laughs> we were, I worked at Garden Grill. And it was just, it's just right across the way from, from the Seas building. And all of a sudden we just got all these people and then we got a, something that was radioed over that was like, we had to close Coral Reef. And we were like, huh? And then later we realized that something happened in the tanks, in the aquarium tanks, and all the water was red. Like, it just yeah, red. Yeah, it was like a red algae, Yeah, wasn't it, it was not, like, it wasn't blood. Yeah, no they one had to clear died, it up. But they had to remove everything. Close down the restaurant, clean like take drain all the water and clean. Not everything. the most appetizing environment, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely to go in there and just? I mean, I'm sure it looked like freaking the sharks ate all the fish and it people looked like and Jaws. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was the craziest experience. So we had overflow people all night, and it was just terrible. But I just just one of those working stories that I will never forget and I was like huh perfect time to tell because 
here we are. But it's a lovely mm-hmm. place, and I highly, highly, highly recommend going there if if you are a seafood person. And even if you're not, because they do have options for adults that are not seafood, too. So this was actually where we had, like, our Christmas dinner on my first trip to Disney. Oh. And it was... So, like, yeah, I was little like you guys, too, and I feel like we have, like, the same reaction where it just blows your mind that you, like, like, we hadn't been in the seas before, I don't think, so Mm -hmm. we just, like, walked into this restaurant, and all of a sudden, you were, like, under the sea, and you were going to eat dinner with fish, and a diver, and sharks, and sea turtles. It was, it was just so cool, and I thought that, I hadn't been back, and I thought, I was like, ah, like, I've seen it, like, I've experienced it, I don't really need to eat there, and then I went with Katie a couple years ago, and I was like, Oh, this is this is still pretty cool. This is yeah, okay. This is this is cool. Like the novelty apparently had not worn off. <laughs> I did the exact same thing. I went when we were young, and then I didn't go again until I was an adult mm-hmm. because I just I'm not a big seafood person, or I haven't been until more recently. And so I, I never. I was like, I'm not going to pay the money just to like see an aquarium. I can see the other side of it, you know, in the seas building. No, it's it's different. <laughs> like it's just it's such a good. It's place. a different experience because mm-hmm. like the lighting, and like everything's very lighting, blue, it? and it's just it's very calming. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're in the water. Yeah. It's amazing because yeah. the way that they have everything placed, like the tables are down really close, but if you're in a booth, your booth is is just like kind of like a half moon shape. So you're all everybody's looking at at the mm-hmm. at the aquarium, and it's just so yeah. Beautiful. It's like stadium seating. And you don't have like a circular table to sit at. It's like you're. It's like a. It's like a movie. You're facing like a movie screen, but it's, it's the aquarium. Awesome. So we're headed back into the world showcase for my restaurant. I chose Restaurant Marrakesh in Morocco because it's another one of those restaurants that I went to when I was younger. I went on my second trip to Disney and have never forgotten it. I was the world's pickiest eater as a kid. Like, I I wasn't a chicken fingers kid, but I was a pasta kid. Mm-hmm. All I would eat is pasta everywhere we went. So when we went to Morocco, their kids' menu then did not have pasta. It was like all these weird dishes and then like chicken fingers. So I was pissed that my parents had chosen to go to this Moroccan themed Mediterranean food restaurant. I was like, what the how hell How dare do? they? I was pitching a fit. I was tired. <laughs> right, I was like, how could you? <laughs> so we walk in and it's just gorgeous. The whole pavilion is absolutely beautiful and the restaurant is no exception. And so we walk in and it's got these beautiful like stained glass chandeliers and these like gorgeous like Moroccan carpets and these like more intricate Moroccan tile mosaics everywhere. So I was kind of like hooked on the inside of it as soon as we came in. So I was like, okay, well, I'll give this place a chance. And then out came the belly dancer. <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's dinner and a show. And like she pulled me and my sister up and like we got to belly dance with her. Uh. And it was one of the highlights of that trip. And we were a little bit older. Uh, I think I was in, like, uh, middle school, maybe. And, you know, usually they pick, like, the really young kids to come up and, like, dance and do everything, basically. But Restaurant Marrakesh is one of the least, like, booked restaurants. Mm -hmm. Because people are afraid of trying different foods. So you can almost always get a reservation there. And most of the time when you go eat, it's pretty empty in there. So we just happened to go, and we were one of, like, three tables in the restaurant. So when the belly dancer came out, she was like, you, people right in front of me. <laughs> so we, we felt like we had the whole place to ourselves. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about their food and their menu. Uh, their price range is 15 to thirty four ninety nine. So not bad. Kind of middle of the, you know, about average of all these uh, table services. Nothing outrageous. And they have Moroccan food. So they've got um, kebabs, different kebabs, um, tangines, couscous, um, and then an amazing, like, warm bread served to the table. And you can also get a traditional Moroccan soup called harira, I believe is what it's called. Um, You know, Hmm. if that's how it's pronounced. Sure. I don't know the difference. I can't correct you. (laughs) So, (laughs) sure. They serve lunch and dinner. And like the other places, it's the same menu. 
So it doesn't matter what time of day you eat there, you can get all the same foods. I have eaten there many times. Um, I would eat there again many times. Mm -hmm. It's any time that we're at the parks and we haven't planned out a table service to go to, that's the one we end up going to. Because you can get a reservation and it's always good. Before I stopped eating meat, I would get the beef kebabs. And whoever I was with, I'd get the beef kebabs and they'd get the chicken kebabs. And then, like, I'd get couscous as my side and they'd get their, like, really good saffron rice. And we'd split it all. So we got beef and chicken and couscous and saffron rice. Win-win. Which is the way to go. And it's delicious. We'd split a bowl of soup and eat our weight in the delicious bread they gave you. Uh, now, I obviously am not going to get chicken or beef, but I will get the seafood tangine, which was the, it was the first time I'd had it the last time that I went. It was really good. Um, I still think the kebabs are better, but if you're a seafood person, it was delicious. Like, the seafood was cooked perfectly. It was very well seasoned. It had, like, candied lemons in it. It was really, it was delicious. And What's, um, it had good texture. You know what kind of, like, seafood it was? Like, it was fish, shrimp. Mm, the fish kind. I think it was <laughs> You know, <laughs> it was, I'm sure they told me the it's not fish on the kind menu of what fish. it is, but you know. I didn't know if it was fish. like fish or if it was shrimp or if it was. Um, it's fish. Uh, I think they, they have a shrimp, they have shrimp something on their menu as well. Um, and the desserts, honestly, the desserts are the best part of the oh, meal. Yes, honey. Everything else is still really good, but the desserts here are just outstanding let me read you some of these desserts oh so the fish they have on the menu are shrimp salmon and grouper all right okay there you go i bet it was i bet it was grouper's pretty good um because i'm not a big salmon fan so they've got um assorted baklavas these are the same ones that you can get in the um quick surface restaurant they're good they're really good baklavas but don't get them here you can get them literally outside Uh, They have something called a Bastilla for one. It's crispy leaves of pastry topped with vanilla cream and sprinkled with cinnamon, powdered sugar, and toasted almonds. I have had this one. It is to die for. That sounds so good. It's like sweet but not too sweet. And it's very light. So if you're eating there in the middle of summer, like you can still get a dessert and not be just feel like disgusting the whole time. They have warm beignets and sweet cream filled, fried with spiced sugar, cinnamon, and cloves topped with toasted almonds and either a dark chocolate or caramel sauce. Mm. They have, this is what I'm going to be trying the next time. They have an almond orange blossom water tart Mm, with raspberry orange coulis. That sounds nice. That sounds amazing. And then they've got... A Marrakesh Delight, which is a fresh fruit salad topped with mint ice cream, toasted almonds, and orange blossom water, and then just the assortment of baklavas. I see a um, um, something that is the same with them. They like uh, toasted almonds and orange They cream. do. <laughs> but I love toasted almonds and <laughs> orange, waters, orange blossom water, so... <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> um, admittedly, this restaurant does not have a great vegetarian menu. The only vegetarian entree they have is basically couscous with some grilled vegetables. Mm. I mean, I'm sure it's very good grilled vegetables, but kind of plain nothing. Like they're they're definitely not creating an exciting vegetarian option on this menu. So, you know, just be aware going in. That that's your option for vegetarian food there. Um, I'm not a big drinker anymore. And the drinks here are just kind of Americanized drinks with Moroccan themed names. So it's nothing too exciting. <laughs> but what they do have is the mint tea. So when you order oh, a mint tea. We talked about here, this before. Yes. When you Yeah, I'm, I have definitely talked about this in another episode, but we're talking about it. Yeah, again. yeah, of course. You order the tea, and they bring it to you in a little Moroccan teapot. And it's it's not like they don't throw some tea bags in some hot water. They, like, make a traditional, like, make it traditionally. And you get an entire teapot, 
in your little cup and it is a, like I you don't have to add anything to it you don't have to add sugar or cream or anything because it's so delicious as it is it's not overpowering mint it's like I can't even describe it it's like a savory minty tea and the last time I got it I was like sipping you get a tiny little cup with it because again like it's all served traditionally and so you get a tiny cup to like sip and so I had my water that I was drinking during the meal and I'm like sipping on this tea and savoring it. And I finished my teapot and drank the last of my tea and the server comes around and he's like, here you go, here's more tea and brings me another teapot. And I was like, oh no, I only wanted one. And he was like, oh, it's, well, it's free refills. You know, if you can drink it, if you want it. And I was like, bitch, it's what? <laughs> I've been I been. I didn't know that word existed tea. in Disney World. <laughs> right? So, um, I made the group I was with, um, sit with me while I drank another pot of tea because this is the end of the meal that I got my second pot. Um, it's that good. So if you go and you like tea at all, definitely get the mint, mint tea with your meal. And it goes with all the food, even though it's minty, it goes with all these like savory beef and chicken dishes. It's so, it's so good. (laughs) They also have a pretty good kids menu. It's got your typical like chick nugs and um, a hamburger, but it's also got a beef kebab and <laughs> served with French fries. Oh God! <laughs> right. It's also got fish nuggets. So you know if you're wanting to try like the Moroccan style seafood, you can, but still nuggets. And then it's got a Moroccan style pasta now, which it didn't have when I went as a kid because that's what I They would heard you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I would absolutely eat here again. And I think I think I've pretty much tried everything I want to try on this menu, except for some of those desserts. And of course, every time I go and there's an updated menu, you know, that's something else for me to try. Um, I would say this is one of my favorite restaurants at Epcot. I agree with you. Certainly my favorite table service. Um, so Restaurant Mayor Cash opened with the Pavilion, September 7th, 1984. This was the first expansion to be added to the showcase. So it's the first pavilion that did not open with the rest of the World Showcase. Uh, when it was being built, King Hassan II of Morocco sent his artisans to construct the entire pavilion and the restaurant, and you can see this in the restaurant, especially all those Moroccan tiles are hand laid by the artisans of the actual king of Morocco because he wanted everything to be legit. Like if they were going to make a pavilion, they were going to make a damn pavilion. I mean, they did. And it's they really did. Good. And I like it's, yeah, it's one of the most beautiful. It's the most beautiful pavilion, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's on the very showcase. pretty. And it's, it, I mean. Mm-hmm. You go into all of these pavilions in Epcot and you're like, oh, wow, this really immerses me into this this piece of the world. But Morocco is very, very immersive. Like, it, it's what I imagine mm-hmm. actual Morocco to be. Yeah, like, when you're in the pavilion, you can look up and you don't see across the lagoon. You don't see the pavilion next to you. Like, you're in Morocco. And I love it. I was fortunate enough to go to Morocco in high school. And I just kept telling everybody in my tour group. I was like, this is exactly like Epcot. We were in, we were in, a, Moro- uh, in a market. And we were like haggling with the vendors. And I was like, I, I got this. I know what I'm doing because I've been to Morocco and Epcot. <laughs> and I'm sure they were I like. Was, you know, bitch. I was 18 years old and I thought I was hot <laughs> shit. But legitimately, like it is super, super, super authentic. Anyway, and that's my story. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) Hope you guys learned some things and want to go try these new restaurants in Epcot. If you've been to these places and you like them, I would um, like to hear what you eat and what you like and if you'd enjoyed it. Um, And any other ones that you've been to that we should go to that maybe we haven't gone to, you can let us know. Yeah, we are still looking for listener stories. We would love to create a listener stories episode just for you guys. So if you've had an awesome experience at one of the Epcot restaurants or a really terrible experience, email us and let us know your story. Um, Yeah, I really want to hear about the terrible (laughs) ones. (laughs) 
email us at spillingthemadtea at gmail.com. You can also tweet us if we didn't talk about your favorite Epcot restaurant at Spilling Mad Tea. <laughs> um, you can also like us on Facebook. We are Spilling the Mad Tea there. And also don't forget to join in all of our conversations and funny memes and articles um, in our Facebook group. We are Spilling the Mad Tea podcast there. And also don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Oh, and I forgot to add in the Instagram. <laughs> don't um, don't forget to uh, follow us on Instagram either, because we're that's that's pretty much where you'll find us at. We are um, are we spilling the mad tea on Instagram? <laughs> we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we're spilling the mad tea on Instagram. <laughs> We're something. (laughs) But, I mean, listen to another episode. We say it there, too. You're probably not listening by this point anymore because you know what's coming, right? (laughs) Anyways, just do the things and we'll we'll talk to you next time. (laughs) 